Okay, so questions on? Well, so I reviewed the video from this last weekend. Right. And um, one of the stages in particular had a lot of footwork mm -hmm. and pivots. Mm -hmm. And I, I made a huge improvement with my pivots, meaning I got 30% better, which is great. Because um, I had at, at least on that one. And one was perfect. I yes. mean, not just good. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah, it was dead The other on. two were not good. So okay. I'm getting a little bit better. Okay. Um, and so I think if we can work on pivots, because what happened is the pivots that were not good were on my non-dominant leg. Well, my dominant side, which is not my dominant leg. Right. Your um, non-pivotal axis. Yeah, not no, on the side of your pivotal axis. Right. Exactly. The one that okay. I don't like to pivot on. So um, that made sense. So let's let's work on evening out maybe some pivots and we'll talk about... Um, well, you were talking about the mechanics of it. And then right. something else I'd like to get to, um, and I just, I had this thought, was the ability to, when your heart rate is up mm -hmm. and you're tired, still be able to perform fine motor tasks. Tough. Something along those, Tough. those lines. Breathing. Um, the, you have to be able to change your heart rate. Okay. In order to change your heart rate, um, two things will be involved. One is your conditioning, mm -hmm. which we've worked on. That your conditioning is, I mean, it's, it's pretty decent. I can get it's the, pretty the much the there and just go. Good. Yeah, yeah good. that's not a problem. The other one is mental state of dealing with the stress. Mm -hmm. So the stress level, um, a lot of times will raise your heart rate. I would say artificially, I mean, it'll raise the heart rate, but I think it's artificial because it's, it's, you're mentally inducing it. It's not physically induced. Um, so there's, those are the two ways you can, you can have that to where it degrades the fine motor skills. The, the way to control it is one through breathing, which is a physical to take care of physical and then mental to take care of the mental is mental state of being able to D redirect your focus back to concentrating on what you're doing. Um, the hard thing, uh, we were talking about this the other night with people and uh, I was t uh, talking about guys when I train that fight, that cage fight, is that if you can control your focus and your composure, it's funny, when you're winning, you don't get tired. When you're, when you're getting your ass beat, you, you recognize that you're fatigued. Um, if you get hit, what will happen is guys will get hit, something will happen that you're not prepared for, mm -hmm. and it will send some doubt into you. We were trying to induce doubt into other people. When you hit someone, um, I'm trying to change their mind. I'm trying to create doubt in their mind whether they're going to win or not. When you have something happen, um, what would be a time where you get stressed like that? Is it just from the physical fatigue? Or is, it, or is there stress that's causing as well? Because it's two different ways to handle it. I mean, you can, you can deal with it pretty much the same way, but so what's generating it? Physical fatigue is more, is more rare mm -hmm. than the, uh, the mental aspect of it, the mental stress of it. Mm -hmm. I experience mental stress two times, mm -hmm. right before I go. Right, which, which is normal. I have a checklist of, of things that I've been using uh, mm -hmm. to combat that, right. which have been working. Awesome. And I'll have to explain, I'll have to tell you what they were. Cool. And then when something goes wrong. And it's like the punch, right it's like the getting punched. It's yeah. the, wait, wait, am I going to, can I hit this target? Am I going to be able to, fin can I, sh it's like, wait, wait, what's happening right now? I mean, There's the it's doubt. I miss a slug target and then it's, wait, now I have to do a reload or I have to think about or now I only have one more and I cannot miss this. Am right. I going to miss it? I mean, yeah. like, okay. those that's, types of things. So okay. that's too mental, physical. Okay. Rare occasions. Yes, it does happen, but it's more rare. Okay. So the doubt, um, the doubt is when something unexpected happens. Something unexpected um, or in the very, very beginning before the buzzer goes off. But I have been, I have been kind of channeling you and mm. Rick and the things there's been a couple things that you have said to me mm -hmm. even when we, when we set up the artificial course in there and we're like you know moving around and stuff mm -hmm. you one time you said is there anything in your matches that you have to do that you can't do no okay well yeah and that you really can't well. do really well so right really, no so, so what i say to myself no. is i three things it's what's the task Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the task is first I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this. Um, what's it going to take? Okay, well, while I'm doing this, it's 
these are the this is the technique this is the motion this is the set of skills to accomplish this task that's your mental checklist so it's what's it what's the job mm -hmm. what's it going to take mm -hmm. okay that's an easy task mm -hmm. because the question the third question i asked myself is if you stood me here and said here's a gun take your time and don't miss any of these targets could i do it yeah oh okay so you're telling me it's easy yeah okay well then it's easy and yeah. it's literally as soon as i say oh that's an easy task because I know that it is because I I've done it. I believe that it's easy because mm -hmm. I know I can do it. Right. I am so relaxed when I shoot. Yeah. Like, I'm not, and I think that's why I don't get so tired anymore. Is because I'm not stressing. I'm like stress creates fatigue. There's three targets. I'm going to shoot the three targets because I know how to shoot targets. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think about the last competition where you did the run and it was eight seconds faster than everybody else. Yeah. Is that so you would faster than the second fastest time, which was my time the last day. Yeah. I mean, so which is funny is you got to the point and as soon as you told me what happened, I, I recognized what it was, was that you were so sick of going through it. You're doing this. I, I got it. I got it. Yes. I, I just let me just let me do it. Let me show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And when your mindset is there, I, I, use, I, I would relate this to uh, what we talked about last week is I have fighters, when they're fighting, I tell them to look bored. Like if you're feeling a little stressed, look bored. And if you look, physiologically, you can change your state by facial expression, but mentally, when, you've, when you change yourself physiologically, bouncing on the balls of your feet brings your energy up, standing flat-footed makes it go down. Mentally, I can change my state to calm if you know how to control it. Um, energetic, which is sounds like when you take, for example, you have people that um, you're getting ready for a competition. I can remember going out and fighting out in LA and I would get ready to fight with guys I train with and I would literally be shaking and I'd go, oh, I'm so amped to do this where somebody else might go, I'm so scared to do this. I was so amped that and then the first thing would happen and my body would absolutely just calm completely calm down right before yeah wow. it was right before i'd be like this and the first time i got hit or i hit someone else something happened then my body would go okay you're doing the thing that you normally do there's no big deal mm -hmm. so it's how you program yourself in the beginning is it is it anxiety or is it excitement okay right. um i got some excitement i remember and I then program from there i remember that switch from being scared to mm -hmm. being excited i remember that I still had the jitters, but I, when I was just like, oh man, I'm so excited to do this. I'm having so much fun. This is so much fun. Like it changed it from like, there's people watching uh -huh. or how is this going to go? Like, mm -hmm. like you're going to jump off the high dive for the first time or something, mm -hmm. you know, like that same kind of gut sinking feeling. Fear of like, the unknown. It's fear of the unknown and fear of some level of danger or the level is not physical danger, but emotional and psychological danger of putting yeah. myself out there and then like falling on your face. What happens if this, what happens if that? Uh -huh. um, so I remember when I made that switch to excitement Yeah. So and the, the, the process, the mental process of like, I know how to do this. Like, and you're right. Absolutely. That one time where I had that stage where it was just blazing, which watching it, it didn't look fast, but it was so fast. Focus. I was so sick of that stage already. I was so sick of the stage. I was just like, I, let's just do this. I mean, like, I'm so ready to be done. This is easy. Can we just, please, I'm the last shooter. Let's all go home. <laughs> so <laughs> but, Yes. Yeah. Now we retrain that yeah. to where now you can use that state. You can access that state anytime you're going to run something that you go, okay, how did I feel? Mm -hmm. How did I bring? And it starts to physiologically bring those things to you. Mentally, you think different, mm -hmm. changes you emotionally. So all those things help. So the doubt, one of the things that can help with is dealing with the fine motor um, work when, you're, when you have doubt. Something bad happens that you didn't prepare for. Prepare more. I know that sounds, it sounds like a gross oversimplification mm -hmm. is, what if um, we'll do things to where we go, we get to the point where we try and, it's almost stupid on how you go, um, hey, I'll have you do this skill. Mm -hmm. Let's say we're fighting. And I'll have guys, I'll go, okay, now you're in this bad position. Now you're in this bad position. Let's change it, make it this bad, make it this bad, make it this bad, make it this bad. And we run every scenario till you get to the point where you go, okay, 
Um, now you have to do it with your eyes closed. Now you have to do it, you can only use one arm. Now you have to do it with, and we're just trying to find ways to make it so ridiculous to where you go, hey, whatever happens, I'll, I'll do something to figure it out. That's also mindset. And that also changes you physiologically too. So if you think about, um, I would think for a special operations thing, um, guys, uh, you'll see guys that are SEALs, PJs, will talk about, um, they, they over-prepare. If they're going in on an assignment, they over prepare to where it's, I call it a reduction to the ridiculous to you try and you, you prepare for so many different things and you go, okay, surely it will go perfectly. And it never does. If it does, you just stand there in amazement. But if it, if it doesn't go perfectly, you're so over prepared that something weird happens. You're like, eh, hey, wasn't that weird? Mm -hmm. Hey, did you see when, yeah, yeah, I saw that. That was really strange that that happened. There was no surprise not because you're you're prepared for everything but your mind is prepared for something different to happen than what will happen to the plan. right and and where you have to be is um, in order to get to that place you have to have a very strong skill set mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. you can't take no, someone skills. exactly <laughs> i can't no. take someone with um, let's say uh, a beginner skill set, or let's say we've got somebody who's training three gun and they've been, uh, they've been competing for two months. Okay. Think back when you had first competed for two months mm -hmm. and I go, okay, just over prepare. So if something weird happens, you can, you're fine. And you do this. Well, I've only seen a few things. I've only, you have to have a very, very strong basic skill set. To where you boil it down to what what we talked about with um, everything else is I make everything fundamental I make everything basic and if everything is basic then I can it's like Legos I can take one out and put another one in and interchange it I don't have to create anything new or spectacular I have a set of fundamentals that I operate from I get a stoppage what do I do this happens. Oh, this is weird. I've never seen this before. What do I do? I already have a procedure in place mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Basic handgun um, doesn't work. Tap rack. Tap rack doesn't Tap. work. Unload the gun. Run. Mm -hmm. Reload the gun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I already have that procedure in place. If it doesn't work again, what do I do? transition to another weapon or I try if I have time I do it again but then I also go there's not oh oh shit what do I do now it's mm -hmm. huh, I'll do stuff that I know well and you can see when people don't know what to do next because they, they get into that um, task fixation uh -huh. loop where they just keep doing the same thing or they just look at it and they're like wondering why it's not working they don't know what to do and it, they just stand there and hesitate yeah for a long time yeah um, instead of transitioning to doing this instead of doing here and doing this so just doing anything and then else. going yeah yeah yeah, exactly. yeah yeah so that's part of it so one is having your fundamentals so strong that you don't um, that you don't lose sight of those mm -hmm. so you don't lose sight of your fundamentals and then two um, understanding how to control those things so the breathing that we've worked where I over oxygenate beforehand mm -hmm. and while I'm running you can breathe to where you do where we do started working um, the six second breath right. two second hold seven second exhale and then we start that's a that's a more of a, a cleansing and a focusing of what we're gonna do mm -hmm. if I lose sight of what I'm doing you can go to what we call box breathing okay. which is four inhale four hold mm -hmm. four exhale four, four. four hold four by four mm -hmm. okay or box breathing mm -hmm. or or you can go we do um, other stuff that i've trained in four-sided breath which is inhale for four slight inhale or a second inhale or relaxed inhale hold exhale for four slight That's pause slight. Okay. Then inhale for four slight pause you may need to do that to calm your breathing down if you've got it so high and you're stressed you can only go you don't maybe you don't want to hold for four mm -hmm. 
and then I start going from there and I have to, I, I, can, I can go to there and then maybe later as I'm regrouping and I'm doing things, I can box breathe. But whatever you find one of those two to slow your breathing down, I like that one mm -hmm. because I've used it, I've used it since I was in the military. I mean, that's been years, but um, it calms your body down and it gives, as you're counting to, it gives your brain something to work on. And if you take your, yourself out of uh, a panic mode, like we talked about the lock, mm -hmm. is you literally will see this, wondering out why it doesn't work, mm -hmm. is you start breathing and concentrating and then it allows your subconscious mind to start helping you and going, okay, what are you doing? Where are you? Where are you in the process? What, let's, let's do this, let's fix this, let's move to here. What do we need to do? People that can't get out of that, you see them just totally stop and shut down. You literally see people freeze and they can't do anything. And they go, well, I'm done. Right. You go, okay. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I don't know what happened. I just froze. Mm -hmm. That happens all the well, time. And even I've experienced that, you know, in performing violin or, or in you can't remember. a speech in front of, and, and, you know, public speaking or something like that. You get that moment where you're like, I give up. You know, like I don't, I can't recall anything. You know, yeah, I'm checked out. Yeah. So, so I have in the past gotten on like a treadmill. Mm -hmm. Got my heart rate up, and then mm -hmm. sat and tried to walk it, but still, still really walking fast, and had the heart rate monitor on, mm -hmm. and watch my heartbeat, and see if I can control bringing my heart rate down, and then mm -hmm. allow it to go back up, mm -hmm. and then down and up. It's very interesting because you can control it with your thoughts and your concentration. Yes, almost. I mean you really can. Yeah, and your breathing. Yeah. But even with my thoughts, mm -hmm. if, I, if I give in to the whole, my heart is pounding so fast, I'm dying. I can't. I'm going to drown. Like I can't. I'll see my heart rate. That up. increases it, yeah. But then if yeah. I go, if I control my breathing and I just think relaxed, I'll watch it go down again. It's mm -hmm. interesting. But mm -hmm. so super slow piece of music. Yeah, I'll just something, something there. Super relaxing, or I'm calm, I'm at peace. I, you know, but so so Oops. that has proven to me mm -hmm. your your mind controls you know your heart rate through your you know, physiology. Yeah, I guess it's so it's all about the mindset. So. I mean, I'd like to work on the mental aspects of calming down when the heart rate is up in order to perform fine motor tasks. I mean, even at, I went to the gym yesterday and we were, we got our heart rate up super, super high, super mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. And then we had to put a barbell together. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was just that the little things where you're like, hey, if you try to go fast, if you try to, you know, make it, if you're. If you try to do with the urgency that you feel, if you're moving with the urgency that you feel, you'll you'll mess it up. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to learn how to operate smoothly, as if I'm calm, like I have all the time in the world, and and when I'm not actually, when I don't have all the time in the world, and my heart rate is up. You know that. Okay. And when you mm -hmm. said over prepare, and you said mm -hmm. prepare more. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the kind of stuff. I know it's silly, but you know, putting a puzzle together when your heart rate is extremely high or you're under stress. Right. That kind of ability, because then I'll be like, okay, well, I'm just, I, I just missed three slug targets and I cannot miss another one, but now I need to reload and not fumbling or dropping that shell, mm -hmm. you know, as I'm doing it under what feels like extreme duress, but is really just the stress of competition. Yes. Focus. Yeah. It's focus. More than anything, it's, it's focus. Um, unless you have something that is completely inhibiting. Now I did, when I was in the military, I did uh, part of the training. We did altitude chamber work um, and you did hypoxic training. So one of the things they would do is you put you in an a, a altitude chamber um, and then start removing oxygen. Mm -hmm. They take a altitude and then start removing oxygen and watch the hypoxia hit. And then they give you puzzles where you're working not only a puzzle, but fine motor skills. Mm -hmm and you'd watch people degrade, there's nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. That you're limit on. If you're outside and you're working and doing this, you can always do it. One is by breathing. That's the first. Focus is the second, is you have to be able to stop, reorient yourself on your task. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, yeah. If that makes sense. Um, the also, the other thing would be, for example, when you, when you mentioned doing the, uh, loading a, a, a dumbbell mm -hmm. is even putting that on the collar and spinning or doing it with your opposite hand and spinning and doing things is that looking at it prior to and understanding in your head that you can do it and then going to it. So for example, let's say if I get to, I don't know if this will be in, in camera or not, but here, I'll, do, I'll do it over here so you can see 
it is let's say this is and I would do you can see it. you can even put it on the there and you okay. can see it. Um so let's say if I'm here um and I'll do let's say this is where you get to the ridiculous is I have to let's say I load here, I'm loading here and I think about how I want to load and if I want to go two at a time, where do I load and where do I spin and I do the task and I do it smooth in a way to where I'm completely successful. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I start, do, I get it to where I can go faster, 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 faster. I don't change anything. So it was like the run you made shooting last weekend, um, weekend before, um, where you're not thinking, oh, I've got to hurry. It just is fast because you're dialed in. Now we start adding stress. You have to learn the skill set first. Yeah. Then we start adding stress. Then we make the stress, then we take the stress and we do this to the ridiculous point. Mm -hmm. So that everything, so everything else reality is, reality is way down here. Yeah, you do this. So what you just said is do it in a way so that you're successful. Always. That is, that is. And the way you want to do it. And the way you want. The way that you want to do it under high stress. Yeah, well, and so that's, that is reminiscent of what I would tell my music students. Mm -hmm. They're like, listen, we're going to get this right from the very beginning. I know you've never seen this before. Play this scale so slowly, if you will, mm -hmm. that it's easy. There's no way you can make a mistake. Right. And they, they didn't, they're, oh, okay, that's a mistake. Wait, 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 you, do not, you didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Do it so slowly, it's impossible to make a mistake. Whatever that means for you. Uh -huh. And so that's, that's kind of what, what goes through my mind when I was shooting is, I need to do this in a way that I'm successful. How am I going to do that? Right. Um, which usually speed is a factor. But then when I look on the camera, it didn't look slow, but I was thinking go slow and deliberate and accurate. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our the way that you phrased that made a lot of sense to me was okay. do it in a way so that you're successful. And the way that you want to do it, not just that you had, because you can do something and be successful and go, I kind of screwed up this part, but I still won. That's right. not good. Yeah. Because guess what? You just, you just build another habit. You just neural grooved a bad habit. Mm -hmm. So where I did it, yeah. even if you did this, you go, ah, I finished second. Somebody beat me. And you go, did you do everything the way that you wanted to? I, well, exactly. Mm -hmm. I was just, I was a little bit slower on this part or this person just killed it that day. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure there were people there that day that did well, mm -hmm. that did, were nowhere near as fast as your speed. Yeah. Well, but it's not that they didn't do, they did it poorly, is they just, they just didn't do as fast as, right. as, as fast. I'm way more interested in, in personal bests than than in uh, you know winning winning for instance mm -hmm. that the the shotgun video I just showed you mm -hmm. I was happy and very pleased with how I did it it was the way I wanted to do it pretty much mm -hmm. at, at least I saw improvements and yet I left a play I got a huge penalty on that on that stage because one of the shotgun targets I shot at the very beginning on the star I shot at but it didn't fall I didn't see that it didn't fall and I went on and I left and it. it went around but you know what yeah. I'm still really happy with that stage. I did what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe that's a, okay, we'll make sure. If it, it was one of those like, okay, listen, it was gray. The background was gray. You really thought you saw, you hit it. Your brain went on to the next tax. I can't like be mad at myself for that mm -hmm. because I still performed the way that I wanted. Right. So. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Does that make sense? Yes. Perfect sense. Okay. So whatever task you're going to do, prepare for it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Um run over every scenario you could possibly run weird what ifs within the time constraint that you have then now when you get under stress let's say it's it's breathing stress okay we can induce breathing stress you can enter re by working the breathing like that we introduce psychological stress too now, the psychological stress doesn't require you to be out of breath, though. It just requires you to be panicky. I mean, you could be fine physically and start to panic mentally, what like you were talking about, and go, how did I miss that? Okay. And instead okay. of okay. Yeah. what's next, you're focused on how in the world did I miss that, and I need to complete this. 
you have to go back to the task. You, it's, it's a relentless focus on the task at hand, not what has just happened. And that, that requires training. Mm -hmm. So I would have you, if you're gonna do that when you train, is have somebody induce screw ups. The way I do it for my guys, for example, I'll put a guy in a rear naked choke. This is where they'll start and they'll already be tired. Somebody gets behind them on the floor, they get one arm in. And I go, one, two, three, go. And if they get choked out, they tap, we do it again. Three quarters of the time, depending on their skill set, they'll get out. The other quarter of the time, they get choked out. Mm -hmm. And immediately they do this. Uh, and I watch what their reaction is. I see them get pissed. And then they get frustrated. And then I want to see, I don't care about that one. I want to see the next one. Because I want to see what they do when they get pissed. Does, it, does that make sense? It makes perfect sense? So now I do this, and then if I watch on the next one, they get pissed and I see them dial in and they focus and they operate better, I go, okay, that's a good stressor for that person. Mm -hmm. Controlled stress. If I see them get angry and they get choked out three times in a row, I do this, stop. What are you doing? Well, I'm pissed that, I know, I can see that. Why, why are you pissed? Well, I got choked out three times in a row. What should you be focusing on? Well, doing this. Yeah, you should be focused on what you're doing. Well, I'm trying to do, yeah, you're trying. Don't try, what are you supposed to do? Well, I'm supposed to do this. And usually what will happen is we'll go back and there's one fundamental mm -hmm. that they're missing that they're not doing. Oh, I thought I was doing that. That's why I'm there watching. I'm the field general watching what you're doing. What you thought you did was you didn't do. You actually did. Let me show you what you did. You did this. Oh, okay. Which would be good to have video if you're even filming practices for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I go back and I go, let's revisit, work your technique, and we work it like you're a beginner. Yeah. It could be a guy that's had 20 fights, and I'll go, okay, show me one. Let me show you how to do it. Here's what I want. Now you do it. And then we'll refine it. And usually what has happened, they're making some small mistake that they've created in training. Mm -hmm. And they got away with it. Like shooting and doing something poorly and still doing well. Mm -hmm. And going, oh, okay, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Or I did well, it didn't matter. Yeah, it does if you want to go to, if you want to continue to right. progress. Right. Okay, so I go back and I fix it. I show them what, they, what I want. Then they do, I, I want to see them do it. Then we do it a couple times and then we do this. All right, ready? Make it live. One, two, three, go. Mm -hmm. And they, they got to do it live. And lo and behold, they'll, they'll fix it or they'll do part of the same mistake they were making. They'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, I no, see what I'm doing. I, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Okay, I go, you see that? Yeah, I saw it. Okay, all right, now fix it. Mm -hmm. Now I do this, fix it, fix that one piece until you do it. Don't move on, uh, be like playing a piece of music and I screw up in the beginning and then I finish the piece, I go, I'll just go back and fix it when I mm -hmm. do it again. Yeah. No, because you're, you're operating from a, a mistake here throughout the rest and it will, eventually you'll make mistakes throughout if you don't fix this in the beginning, you'll never fix it. Well, because your brain doesn't know it's a mistake. Your brain is like, this is how I play it. Yeah, and this, this will continue. Yes. This is how you play it. Yes, and it will continue to yeah. do that. So anytime you make an error like that, go back, we go back and fix it. So fundamental. That's fundamental what I fix. fix. Yeah. What I want to fix is the fundamentals of my pivoting. Okay. So let's look at pivoting. So when you pivot, um, for you, you did one, the one was very, very good. Yes, it was so um, good. <laughs> is that it was quick and it was a quick step. What what was interesting is what that set up, what, how it was set up mm -hmm. was that you did your tactical walk well. It was straight if from you, a tactical walk into a pivot, yeah. Did you see how wide your feet were on their tactical walk? They had to be. I was going to slip and fall. Exactly. That, so the, It was, honestly, it was so slippery that mm -hmm. if I knew that if I wasn't just like, that it, I was going down. Well, you saw me slip. You saw me slip uh -huh. on the on the takeoff. Uh -huh. So it was all about getting as much. Yeah, you can see the foot go, yeah. 
to the you know as I possibly could. Traction Heel as in, possible. dig. Yeah. Okay, so and now I'm on it. I'm on wet cement. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in sand. I'm in mud. I'm in high grass. I'm in high wet grass. I'm in uh, sand. I'm in uh, uh, on carpet. I'm on gravel. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you go well. When I'm in this area, I walk this way, and then I'm when I'm in this area, I walk this way, and then if it's really slippery, I'll just go slower. And no, you won't. No. You'll you'll change it. We get slower under stress, right? Absolutely. You immediately <laughs> slow down. Yeah, right. No. Spastic. You go spastic. Yeah, you go spastic. Your your fine motor goes slower. Okay, um, but you get spastic with what you're doing. So when if you notice when you were walking, your feet were about mm -hmm. here. To where you were actually doing before where you actually crossed your feet when you do tactical walk so now when the more okay so understand this from fighting um, is that the closer your hands are together and this happens with your feet as well the closer your hands are together when we work punch defenses the closer your hands are together the more and this is why we talked about shooting from here is the same as us for fighting is that the closer your hands are together, the, the harder time your brain has of making a decision which hand to use, so it will use both. So you'll see people that are untrained, somebody goes to punch them and you'll see this. You have bilateral symmetry in your body. If this one does this, this one wants to go here. No one does this, it, it'll be here because one, it feels safe, mm -hmm. and this is your instinctual response to pain, okay? So the same thing happens with your feet. Um, we used to do studies years ago where they had people back when they had driver's ed, they would have simulators and people used to, because you had a clutch, a lot of people drove tractors back in the day. Um, you would drive with your foot on the brake and the gas at the same time. So if you ever see, and it's going away now a little bit, but if you ever see any really old people, usually with big blue cars, um, driving slow with their brake lights on, they probably have the both feet on the same. And what they do in the simulator is they'd have like a, a little kid run across the street and you'd see people do this with the gas pedal. Well, that's why they sometimes crash into buildings when they're trying to park. Yes, or run into other cars or yeah. yeah. So they'll brake when they don't want to, they'll, be, they'll go with both and whichever one goes first will go there. Okay, so the closer your feet are together too, the harder time it has a decision, making a decision on which one you're gonna go first. Hmm. Okay, so what we did when we started, when I, we first started doing this is I had you tactically walk, mm -hmm. and you can see me from when I walk, tactically, you see how wide my feet are, mm -hmm. so that I can pivot any direction quickly. Okay, and you see how much turned turn because yeah. now I can turn over this hip and I'm very very strong and stable which is what you did on your turn to this side mm -hmm. okay um, you're up and over up and over and if my feet are too close together when I'm doing this your brain when you go to pivot it has to stop and think which foot you're gonna turn on how you're gonna turn and you're not in balance and as you found out when you had mud on there too that it was much harder to to do things you had to go wider to do that, which is, that's good. That's excellent training function, okay? So your pivot on the right, so let's do, let's do a pivot on the right. Show me a pivot on the, uh, over the left leg over that you did right well, leg, right? yep. So over the left leg though. Yeah, that was, that's bang, spot on, yep. And then my pivot, even this, even, let's see, I was walking forward and then it was like a, like that. Yeah, can you feel how your body can it lean to yeah. yeah and that'll be from the pivotal axis so because if my right's the worst. yep I mean, so if you're moving now which way do you want to go do you want to go left foot in front and pivot or do you want to stay behind and step out to pivot maybe i shouldn't ch do more balancing on the foot that is worse at balancing well let's think about this so that's when you hear me when i'm watching the video you're here when i'm saying eyes mm -hmm. is now if i do this if I'm here and I look, this foot knows what to do. Mm -hmm. And you'll turn this way rather than if I have my eyes up and I know it's over here and now I'm going to step and now my eyes are trying to orient me. Yeah. So do try and yeah. do so use. Uh, yeah. So like using here somewhere in here, focus on something in here. So be moving and just out of the corner of your eye, pick something up mm -hmm. and then stop and pivot. 
So pick something up out of the corner of your eye first and then step and pivot. Okay. And go a little faster. A little faster on Yep. Okay. Yep. Let me see what you do. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. It's the circle dumbbell thingy. Okay. So now do this. Go back. Yeah. Okay. Now don't pick it up until you want to turn. You know it's there, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Feel your body. Feel it lean. Yeah. What okay. Do? To the right. Well, do you yeah, feel it I'm, lean? Because I'm scanning and moving at the same time. So eventually I have to, oh no, that was it. And then come yeah. back to it. Yes. So now when you pick it up, even if you do this out of the corner of your eye, you're, you know where it is. And now you hunt. When we talked about doing this before, even with your eyes up this way, this is easy. Now I do this. I look at all the targets and then I move and I do, because I know where the targets already are. Now picking up something peripherally, it does the same. This is very fast, but your peripheral vision is not focused. But it's, it's incredibly fast. This is, this is our survival stuff mm -hmm. and to pick up movement. So now... So it's fast, but not focused. Yes. Peripheral vision is. Yes. This is okay. very, very focused, mm -hmm. but it's not fast. Okay. It can't pick up fast movement as well. So uh, uh, the, this is the tunnel vision. This is worst. The, the strongest focus is tunnel vision, mm -hmm. and that's the straight on tunnel vision. Whereas this, the worst is I don't even see it. But yeah. So think about looking at a fan. Uh -huh. You can look at a fan spinning straight at it, and not be able to see the blades, and then turn and look out of the corner of your eye. You can see each blade rotating. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the speed. That's a survival thing that's a survival mechanism this is for focus this is for quick movement now if i pick that up in my field of vision and i'm here and i already pick it up you notice your body goes to it because you've already seen it if it hasn't seen it what's it going to do it's going to locate do you see how my body goes the focus and, the, and, the, and that takes more like that uh-huh okay. so now if you already see it so for example here, let's make it a little more demonstrative. So I'll make it where you can pick it up easier. So the targets you were using, they're orange. I'm gonna go here. Or gray, they can be okay. any color. So any color. now when you see this out of the corner of your eye, is that you that's easier to pick up? Can you see it better? Well, the black was pretty easy because you've got the white background. Okay, so the blue is even easier, yeah? In front of the black, no. <laughs> okay, how about this? Oh no, okay. How's that? Is that easy or what? That's easier than that. that simulates a target, yes? Yeah. Okay, so here's what I would have you do is, okay, let's do this one and I'll show you what I do for stress. Okay. And we'll just do like baby steps of stress. Okay, okay so. That's footwork though. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, because, because what I would have done in the past is get to here and then do something like this. No. No, no, no. I mean, like, that's yeah, what, yeah. That's what, <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and now. Yeah, we'll call that the, the little house on the prairie movement. Yeah. Good. Okay. So pick it up out of the corner of your eye. Okay. And now I'm here. If you notice, you'll go here. It's this. Okay. okay. And go spot on. Pick it up. Pick it up and then don't worry about it. Okay. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Move to it. Go. Bang. It's dead on. It yeah. Was, it was dead on, which I, I honestly went, okay, yeah, I picked it up. Now I'm ignoring it. Yeah. Because uh, now you know where it is in space. Yes. Yeah. Right on. Okay. Now, we do that a couple times, and then I do this. Okay. Now I make it blue with some black in it on the black. So it's harder to see. Yeah. Okay. Now do it. Good. Pretty, same. pretty good. It's the same. Okay. Yeah. Now, to make more stress, and this is just black on black. Black on black, but smaller. Now, what are you looking for? What am I looking for? I always think of Sesame Street. One of these, these things, things is like not the like the other. One of these things. What's what's weird? What's different? Right. And you go. Oh, that's not the same, but that must be where it is. Yeah. So as you walk, move. Okay. Better? Okay, now do this. Now do here. Go back. Okay. 
Now I'm going to be in your field of vision. Okay. So you're in the way, right? Yeah. Now. So don't look where it is. I just okay. saw you look. Okay. okay. So don't look where it is. Now move. Okay. Move. Okay. Pick it up. Ah, but I'm not good. Uh, now, now it's muddy, slippery like you did on the weekend and you go. But, ah. Uh, that's, that's. Visual distraction messed up my footing. Is that what Not being able to locate it visually. Do you know where it is in space anymore? Not uh, perfectly. No. Uh, we've talked about this before too. Um, baseball player playing by the warning track. Okay. The pitcher throws the ball. You hear this. He sees the bat. Then hears the ball. You don't even hear it in the same time 400 feet away. You don't, see, you don't hear it in the same time because the sound travels slower. He sees it. He sees the pitcher throw 100 miles an hour. Boom. Boom. There's the bat. He's already starting to move to where the ball's going. Mm -hmm. Now, how does he know that? Visual. He's seen it millions and millions of times. He doesn't wait for it to be hit and then do this. It's not like your weekend softball game where somebody hits the ball and people are like, doing this. Okay. He is, as the pitch is being thrown, you'll see him do this. The guy swings and you'll see him start to move. They have to, to be able to run it down. Now you got guys that'll run something down that's 80 feet. I'm going to run 25, 30 yards to run something down. The guy does this and dives and catches it, gets up, throws it in, tips his hat, puts his sunglasses back on. It's like, meh. Okay. That's the visual pickup because I can do this is I can watch there. Ball's gone. Do you see the ball flying? You might not. Mm -hmm. You might not pick it up until you get to where you're going. And then they do this. Oh, there it is. But I knew where it was starting. Right. And I knew the trajectory of it mm -hmm. and I knew where it was going. Now, when you do this, if I'm moving from here and I pick this up in my field of vision and I do this, I know where it is in space. Now it's, now it's this as opposed to I'm, I'm going to find something in this area or I go, I look there and now, now do you know where it is now? Now I could have you start looking over there and you would find it faster. Right. Where before, if we started and we had that, you'd do, you'd almost do this. Does that make sense? So your visual acuity, your visual uh, referencing beforehand, mm -hmm. now your brain knows where everything is. Sure. And now you can, you got a really good idea. You, do, you don't, imagine if somebody moved the target after you did your walkthrough. Well, and you can tell too if on day one it's here when, during your walkthrough on day two you go to walk through it again and it's moved an inch you know i mean that's what i'm talking you, about you really do know where the target i mean you know yeah. yeah okay okay so there's a difference between going yeah i know where they are and now doing this is even picking it up earlier as i see it in my peripheral vision i know basically where it is and i can get there fast and i'm doing this as i go to it not this as I go to it. Mm -hmm. Does that does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So you're moving and then pick it up peripherally and then step pivot. Yeah? Right Better? On right on it. Yeah. Okay. Now where you're trying to, this is the stuff we worked last week, was that when you get to here and pivot, you recognized it when you did the shotgun work mm -hmm. where you pivoted really well mm -hmm. and you go I didn't even recognize it till after I watched the video a couple right. of times. I went, hey, that's what we worked perfect. on. Yeah. That is the ability. So imagine being able to, I've got a gun on a turret and I do this. This is your turret. Right. Well, that, well, that, this is your lock. That one footed stuff that we did. Uh huh. I mean, that's when it really started to change for me. That, that was what, you know, working on this and getting this. Uh huh. Or this, whatever. Yep. That's when it really, you know, because you turn faster on a dime, you know, than if than this. Now imagine if it's slippery and you have your foot flat and you try to turn. What does your foot do sometimes? In the mud. Yeah. Well. Rotating here. Want to see another video because that's what happened to me. Uh huh. <laughs> stages, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So when I do this, and we talked about this with ice 
is that how guys run? I tell them, if you're going to run on ice or you're going to walk on ice, walk on the balls of your feet. Mm -hmm. Surface area, more pounds per square inch. When you step, you're, when you oh, see yeah. people slip, this is where they go. Tactically, what you can do, um, I, do I practice this, it's kind of nerdy, but um, I'll do this in sand. Mm -hmm. Like if I go to the beach, I'll do this. Um, outside in snow, when it snows, I'll do this, is I'll purposely walk heel and I'll dig my heel in to pull myself. Mm -hmm. Dig it in, dig it in, dig it in to pull. Well, also, but also, when your heel on your front foot goes down, you haven't released with the ball of your support foot yet. No. So even if this goes out, you're still holding yourself up. With yeah, when I go here, yeah, I can stop myself yeah, too if I need to. Yeah. So think about if you go... Um, you go here and you miss and then you come back. You could even go back again if you wanted to. Right, right. And then step, you could even step again and go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I need to work on that. You know, walking forward, turning right, then turning left, then turning left again, then mm -hmm. until it's, I don't have to think about it's not a thinking thing. Right, right. Um, and like, okay, which, oh, okay, now, now switch. Okay, yeah, you know, it just yeah. happens. So do this. You can, even, you can, uh, the things that I, I run, mm -hmm. um, and, and I have a lot of people because I have some ideas that are extremely different than everyone else, is that I go, okay, test it. Okay. Test it. Mm -hmm. Test what you were doing against it, and then do what I have you do. I have people that will purposely do it wrong once they're doing it my way and to, to mess it up so they can say it's wrong. And I go, I just saw you do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, try to walk. Walk heel toe like you used to with, with your feet crossing and then try and step and pivot. Okay. So, but do it with, yeah, do it with a weapon. Okay. Can you feel the awkwardness of it? Well, there's a lot more movement to the... I'm on the I'm on the heel of my mm -hmm. foot. Number one, I'm more narrow than I would like to be, or mm -hmm. at least in a line. I don't want to be in a line like this. I'd rather be like this. Uh huh. And I'd like to be more out over the ball of my foot. And then there was I stood up straighter. Uh huh. And there was a lot of this. Uh huh. So you're not going to have any balance when your body's off balance. Will you dial in to do what you're going to do? Your body, in order to do what you're you want to do, what you're going to execute, your body has to stop. Yeah, it has to stop and or as and I make press the decision. The trigger, it'll adjust my balance, which off doesn't go well. Yeah, yeah. or you'll be impatient and do those mm -hmm. things too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're doing, and then go back to do one peripherally, and then walk wider like you did, and then pick it up, um, and that's pretty easy. That's that's more on. And it'll be different when you have when you have boots on and and mm -hmm. movement. You're also your adrenaline levels up. You're in a in a little more uh, uh, optimal state when you're shooting than when you're just training. So the other thing that I, that I would have you do is when you do your training, and this is what I do for the guys. For, I always use this as an example for fighting. If you want to go to extreme level of what we're doing is. I try and make it as live for them as possible without them getting overly hurt mm -hmm. while they're training to, to train for a fight. So whatever I can do to recreate the stress of a fight. So what I do for them is I artificially create it with fatigue. Mm -hmm. So I'll have guys, they'll do a seven, normally my amateurs fight three minute rounds. I'll have them do a seven minute round and they'll have a fresh guy on them every minute. So by the time they hit five minutes, six minutes, they're usually drooling mm -hmm. and, and they're, they can't operate um, at anywhere near efficiency, but I want to see what they're doing mentally. Mm -hmm. When you get exhausted like that, there's nothing you can do except to concentrate. Focus. Okay. Now let's say you've missed the last three in a row. Mm -hmm. What should you be focusing on? If so I, let's go to the I, stress. Yeah. If I missed three in a row, I think mentally I'd be going stop. The clock has stopped. Gather your fundamentals and do what you know how to do. Okay. That's kind of like the whole stop. You know, it's like Rick Staples voice. Stop. Yes. Stop. 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 Yes. I'll readjust my grip. Uh -huh. I'll take what I have and I'll just do it. Okay. So where are you trying to get back 
to? I'm trying to What's, get... What are you trying to... Mentally, where mentally, are you trying, trying to get to? I'm trying to get to. back to the third step of the mental preparation, which is, this is an easy task. Or, Go back or, even or the further. Second, it's, 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 what's it going to take? What's it going to take to do this? How about... Go back even further. I've done this before. Go back even further. Don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What the what the f are you doing? Um, what am I doing? Hmm. When you show up to the event, do you do this? What are you going to do today? I don't know. I don't know. I just told they told me to come here. Mm. Aren't you going to shoot today? Ah, oh, yeah. That's what I was going to do. I was going to shoot. What are you going to shoot? I don't know. What am I shooting today? So I go back to what am I actually doing? Bring yourself back to, I got to bring myself to the moment. Complete awareness of yourself. And we're going to zen out a little bit on doing this. But think of this is what are you actually doing? I go, I'm shooting. Okay. What are you shooting? I'm shooting shotgun. Oh, cool. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Well, what do you do? Well, now what do you do? Mm -hmm. Now I go yeah. back to, now it puts me back into, where am I going mentally? Is anything that happened, am I even thinking about it? No, you're thinking about the next shot and you're thinking about what it will take and you're thinking about just, just the fundamentals. From the beginning, yeah, and like you're, you're starting like you did from, yeah, from the day, yeah. from the beginning of the day. You'll see guys, um, I see it watching guys play golf, and it's, it's fun to watch when guys do it professionally or women do it professionally in golf. You'll see it in tennis because it plays out over a longer period of time. One of the things that kills me, I'll watch a lower level tennis player kicking the crap out of a better player for the first two sets. Let's say for guys, it's a five set match possibly and the, the, the upstart wins two and everybody starts talking upset and you see the guy he's strutting, he's doing his thing, he's ready and all of a sudden you see something happen. You see something happen. You see the guy start to look at his racket. You see him start to talk to himself. You see him start to look over at their coach. You see him hit the ground. You see him start to worry and then you can watch it disintegrate over an hour and a half or two hours you can watch them disintegrate just for that fact and then the other guy the big experienced person ends up winning and they're like yeah it was a good match I hung in there till the end what did that person do that that person didn't as soon as something went south the the, the higher level person was getting smoked in the beginning and they did this next point next point Go back. Okay, what am I doing here? I'm playing tennis. So my grip should be here. I should do this. I should do this. They might glance at their coach, whatever thinking. You see them, you see them bounce around. You see them change their physiology. And then this. Back to what they're doing. To what they're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, the people that don't do that, they start doing this. You'll see them doing this. Making practice swings. I go... You're the number 12 guy in the world. Do you not know how to hit a forehand? Really? Really? You can beat 5 million other people on the planet that play tennis, but you can't beat, you can't, you can't do a forehand or you can't do a backhand. Uh, uh, go back to, go back to your grip. Go back to, what are you doing? Well, I'm playing tennis. Okay. Do you know how to play tennis? Yeah, I'm really good. Okay, well, how do you hold the racket? How do you do this? That's stuff that I can do mentally really quickly mm -hmm. and then bouncing. And what it does is it takes me out of, why am I hitting my, why can't I hit my forehand today? Mm -hmm. Why can't I shoot right today? Mm -hmm. Why can't, I'm hitting, why can't, every time I turn here, why am I off? What you're focusing on is what you're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And you're not going back to, I already know how to do this skill set. Now, once you get to there, once you do this, what am I doing? I'm shooting. What am I shooting? I'm shooting shotgun. Do I know how to do this? Yeah, I know how to, this is easy. Well, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You're going to be asking this in your head. Well, I do this and then I do this. And now you go back to, you'll go back to your fundamentals right, right. and your focus is completely in the moment, not what has happened. Right. 
rather than you thinking about how do I fix this, it is what am I doing? Okay. Does, does that make sense? Well, it makes perfect sense. I know that's kind of a long explanation for that, but that's, that's going back to the beginning. Um, and that's also a trained ability to, to do this. To get hit really hard and do this. And focus more. Brush, it, brush that off and focus on what you're doing. Focus more. Um, watching uh, footage of Michael Jordan. We talked about guys like that to where the ability that your focus is so, I mean, it's like a, a blowtorch. I mean, it is burning so short and tight and hot that the focus is, even if something bad happens, you do this. Duly noted. Right, yeah. Duly noted. That's fine. Uh-huh. Okay, didn't you see, I already got, I'm, move, I'm moving, I'm already moved on. I'm already moved on. This is the... This is more important. So that's one way to refocus. Two is the breathing. Now what you can do if you want to put it in conjunction with that is breathe first. When you get, if you get fatigued or you feel the stress is overriding you and you can't shut this off, breathe. Mm. Because the breathing will shut, will start to shut this off. And if you need to do the oxygenating breathing I know sometimes that's hard while you're in a competition beforehand, after, um, I'm just so amped today, I can't calm myself down. Oxygenate, and you'll feel your body do, it'll force it to do that and then go back from there. But if I can't, if I can't get out of my head and go back to the beginning, breathe, mm -hmm. and that's something you can be doing training to do while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that, that all makes sense. A lot of sense. I need to do better in my my training, my live practice at creating. Well, I was gonna say I need to do better at creating those situations that um, the punches, you know, out of out of something when things are difficult or they don't go as planned. And I have done a pretty good job. I mean, I I don't I try to shoot from you know something that's wobbly. I'll if I don't have something, I'll stand on one leg. Mm -hmm. You know, something that takes it away from being optimal. Mm -hmm. You start to get used to those things though and you go, right. even then you'll go, yeah, I know how to do. Yeah. Yeah, I know how to do. So, so it's, what should I do? How can I, how can I do this in my life? Because um, I try to hit the outdoor range at least once. Well, this would be for anybody is that to take, um, uh, if, for example, if you're going to do handgun training, mm -hmm. take, mm -hmm. I, I know some people don't have the ability to do this, but if you're, if you're a professional shooter, you certainly do. Take 10 magazines, load your pockets put a varying number of rounds in each one and without looking load it and then work and then I get one that's empty that if it's I should do this boom boom as soon as it cycles I should be running another um, there's two uh, and it should be in your head as you're working you should go Oh, that was interesting. There were three rounds in that one. There was only one in the first one. I wonder how many is going to be in the next one. That's, that's when you're completely in control. Mm -hmm. If you're not in control, you do this. Oh, shit. I wonder how many this one has. Um, what, what, I, 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 what, uh, was I fast enough on the last one? Did I, did I not prepare? Now I'm, that's all the doubt things. that I can't, I'm not focused on task anymore. So I, I purposely do that to myself. Um, I can pre-fatigue myself and do that. Mm -hmm. I can do burpees and then run that same scenario and see how well I concentrate. Mm -hmm. But I have to change it every time. When right. we do... I feel that. I feel like if you just... If, oh, I'll do that again better next time. You will do it better next time because it's not as hard anymore because... It's a said principle. Specific adaptation to impose demands. Mm -hmm. That's a said principle. So um, think about when we do airsoft uh, stress drills mm -hmm. for the firearms class. What does everybody want to do more of after we do that class? More the airsoft the, yes, drill. More of the force on force. That was fun and it was this and it was this. Because they think they're going to get better at doing it. They want to think about it like paintball. The first time is training, the second time is entertainment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, so, want, they want to do it for fun now the second time. And, and it's because of their ego. They got spanked and they want to fix their ego. Mm -hmm. They don't want to fix what they were doing. They want to fix their ego. They want to get better at playing the game. They don't want to get better at fundamentals and operation. Yeah, does that make sense? Um, yes. 
So when you're doing it, when you're doing training for yourself, you can go, well, I did this and I did this, did this. Well, you're getting better at playing that game. Right. You're not getting better at operational. And so that's, that's kind of at the base of my question because I'm starting to get good at my game. At, yeah. In my training. Okay, so yeah. Okay. I, I so you can this, change I it. This, I, this, I'm try I need to change. And also, how do I, how do I get I was, the stress level up that I need in training that's going to be more than the stress level of competition. He said, well, you can fatigue yourself, mm -hmm. but how do I get that? I, I don't know, like, um, the, the, the how much you care, aspect, the count, the danger aspect. Okay. So, um, this will be, you'll, you'll understand this from, we'll correlate it to musical performance. Mm -hmm. Um, metronome. So I take a piece of music, let's say it's uh, 62 beats per minute, okay? Mm -hmm. I set it at 80 and I play it. Okay. Now, are you gonna make mistakes? Maybe. I set it at 100. Are you gonna make mistakes? Probably. More than before. Yeah. Is it gonna be as perfect of timing when I go back to 62? No. But what I'm doing is I'm having the ability, I, I'm pushing myself to make that same performance and I artificially induce it by a time constraint. Mm -hmm. So now in shooting, let's say that I have targets and I never, I, I, I recreate balance. Maybe I, I stand on something that, that makes my balance deviate. Okay, after a while I do this, mentally when I see that thing, I'm already prepared for how do I adjust my body when I hit? Mm -hmm. You know that from when we do these drills, after a while it's not challenging anymore, which is awesome, mm -hmm. but also your brain gets into a um, lazy mode. Mm -hmm. And then when something weird does happen, now you have the potential to go, uh, 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 uh. There's nothing on the line, that, that, that lazy mode is, there's nothing on the line here. Uh -huh. If I mess up, I'll just do it again. Right, so and it's that one and done kind of danger that's like, hey, if I mess up, I don't get to take that back. Exactly. So now I do this as I, um, I'll do it by a time constraint is maybe I have a run that I set up in training mm -hmm. and I do it um, and see whatever my time is normally. And then I do it, um, I make it, let's say if it takes you like your run you did that you did well that on the other competition where you were eight seconds ahead, mm -hmm. um, what was the whole run? A minute? Um, the, it was 68, 62, 68. Let's just say 62 seconds. 62 seconds. seconds. Now I do this as I take what I normally run in 62 seconds mm -hmm. and I go, I'm gonna do it in 40. Okay. Pressure? Mm -hmm. Now, where's your pressure? To go faster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your pressure is to execute faster too. Mm -hmm. Now you start getting a little, if you, and if you really want to beat it, you can't go, well, that's ridiculously fast. Nobody can do that. Right, already right now, you're talking yourself out of inducing the stress. Now I do this, I go, shit, how close can I get to that? Mm -hmm. How close can I get to that? As now I'll run it and I'll maybe I'll do it, let's say in 59 and I make some mistakes. Now what will happen, here's another tool you can use for the training, is I try and force myself to go ridiculously fast and that increases the stress level. It's an artificial increase, which is good. Mm -hmm. That's like a competition one to where you've seen somebody else set a time and you go, okay, I gotta beat that time. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's so ridiculous and you push yourself and then you go back to doing it normally. What it will also do is that when you make it ridiculous, what you'll see is there are some things you go, wow, I still, even as fast as I was going, I did these things well, but you'll find a couple things where you go, ah, I was off on this, I was off on this. Those are things that you need to work on in real time as well. Okay. Okay. okay, then going back to after you run that at the whatever level, the super fast level, is now I'll go back and run it at a normal time mm -hmm. 
and do it and then go back and do it fast again or I, now I do fatigue and I try and run it ridiculously fast. And you'll probably find that once you go from the fast back to the normal time, the things that you did really well at the fast pace, you'll still you'll do still really do well. well. And you'll probably be focusing on the stuff that you didn't do well at at the fast pace, which yes. will then be at the level that they need to be at that pace at least. So I'm constantly doing this. So I take my weaknesses and I bring stuff up and I work on those things, those little things. And there'll be little things that you'll notice that if you, if you didn't do that drill, you'd never notice. Mm -hmm. You'd say, oh, my overall performance of doing this particular competition wasn't as good. Mm -hmm. Well, why? Well, it was just this one competition or um, you, you won't discover the areas that you're making mistakes on consistently. Okay. So when you have um, what you then what you can do is take those level those areas that are not as consistent bring those up um, and those are the ones you spend the bulk of your time working on you'll find in that competition then you'll know ahead of time too what are the areas where I'm going to need to maybe I know these I will kill these and you go oh okay these are the ones I've been working on I will have time when everything's going well, I'll have time and I'll take an extra quarter of a second to really focus on these particular things. If you have time to go through. Now your brain just knows, and, and that's preparing more. Mm -hmm. does, does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm just preparing what I'm gonna do more so. The guys when we fight, um, I never train anybody to fight like me. I train them, I find out what they do well, and then I accentuate what they do well, and then I try to smooth out or eliminate the, the errors. I don't go, well, if they have this error, I go, okay, just make sure that you don't get into this position because you're screwed. And as I go, okay, this is a problem. You need to work on this to bring this up to where it's at least manageable. And then we'll focus on this area. Mm -hmm. And if this does happen, then you get to where you're, you're at least manageable. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah. make sense on it too? Okay, so what we're doing, what's cool for you now, and if you're noticing too, is that this is not big blocks of new things that you have to learn it's refinement. Mm -hmm. It's the difference of somebody that's been playing a, an instrument for a year and somebody that's been playing 20 years. There's a huge difference of what you're going to work on. Okay. The basic, you're still, you still need to have that grasp of the basics, but you, now you need to know to go back. We're, we're progressing to the next level to where it's not like we talked about last week. It's not, um, man, I just did that. It was so awesome. What did I do? Right. It was not in a pressurized way. I should be able to do that every time. It was a recognition of that should be my baseline. That is my baseline. Right. You go, that was easy. I should, I'm, I'm capable. I, not I should be able to do that is I'm capable of doing that every time if I mm -hmm. do what I've been training. Yeah. Now, this is, where, this is where most people, what's so funny, this would be for people watching this too, is that um, and any of the training, I love basics. I'm uber nerdy about basics. That's how you get, that's how you become excellent is those things are become an afterthought. But they're, they, they've got to have the foundation. you got to practice the really, what people call boring shit. That's how you get good. And uh, it was funny when I was training in Denver a month ago, we talked about this and um, uh, Joey had asked everybody, um, how do you deal with, I can't remember exactly the question, but it was, um, how do you get better on, and when you're working just basic stuff? And I said, I love working the basics because even as I'm doing something that I've done a million times, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking for micro improvements 
constantly. I'm 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 constantly uh, uh, regrouping and I'm looking and I'm seeing uh, collectively, okay, is this a little better? Is this a little better? And I'm looking for micro improvements on everything that I'm doing, even in that stuff. I mean, you'd think after 30 years, I'd know how to punch and kick. Mm-hmm. Every day when I come in, if I discover something that makes me a, takes me from maybe 98% efficiency to 99 I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm geeking out about it. Right. That, that, when you get to that level, that's what you're looking for, but it's always there. You can always refine and do those things, but take your basics and dig into them where I'm looking for micro improvements or even understanding them more. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the kind of stuff that most people don't, they want the sexy stuff. They want to see, they want the end result. They want to be standing there at the end, getting the trophy and, and doing those things and looking cool while they're doing it is you have to do the work first and that will all, all that will lead to to doing those things yeah cool good stuff yeah 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 does so. that make sense yeah it makes it makes it all makes sense and that's what i like i like what the last part of what you said was the understanding it and thinking about it studying study you know? uh-huh uh-huh and uh, if you don't understand something, you can do it once. But if you understand it, you can do it every time. I can repeat it, yes. There's a huge difference between seeing someone uh, uh, play a note uh, between an A-level musician, a first seat musician, and a third. What's the difference between a first and a third seat musician? Or even a first and a second? Eight, 98 to 99 basics mm-hmm. and the quality of each note the refinement of each note opera singers athletes anything like that it's the quality of the basic mm-hmm. um, that takes it at that level is it sexy not necessarily but um, if you want to be really really good that's where it is for you and you have unlimited ability to work on that if, if you dig into that <laughs>